Hello everyone, welcome back to the garage and a new video on the RATST. Today we're going to have a quick look at the valve clearance, so let's get straight into it. So I'm going to start by removing the spark plugs from both cylinders just to make the engine easier to turn over. Unfortunately, this spark plug came out easy and there's even oil on the thread, so I'm guessing the owner must have done that, which is good. Next I'm going to pop out the inspection plug out of the crankcase, just so I can see the markings on the flywheel. And now I can remove the rocker covers. I've got a tray ready to catch any oil that might be dripping. Next I'm going to put the bike in last gear and turn the engine over by turning the rear wheel until I see the top dead center mark in the inspection window. Then I can check if the rockers are loose on the side I'm working on. If not, I'll turn the engine over, another complete revolution. Checking the rockers are free, just to make sure I'm on the top dead center of the compression stroke on this cylinder, which I am. And these valves are too tight for me to even put the feelers in, so I have to loosen them up first. And I just realized I forgot to mention anything about checking the end play. It's good on this bike, so that's why I didn't go into any detail on adjusting it. But it is important you check it, so next time I get an airhead in the garage, I'll make sure I demonstrate that. And there we go, once I'm happy with the adjustment, I'm just gonna snug them down, making sure the adjuster doesn't move, and then I'm gonna torque up the spec. What I'm aiming for is for me to slide the feeler gauge easily in between the valve and the rocker, but there's enough friction there for the feeler gauge to remain horizontal. The correct gap should be set at 0.2mm for the exhaust and 0.1mm for the intake, but it's very common and a bit safer to put 0.15 on the intake, which is what I'm doing now. Valves on these air-cooled BMWs tend to get tighter as you use them. So I've just torqued the lock nuts to the correct specification and double checked the clearance, which is all good. Now I'm going to turn the engine over to complete revolutions, and then I'm going to check again and see if everything stayed the same. Which fortunately it did in this case, so it's all good here. I can move over to the other side, but I'm not going to film that because it's the exact same process. I've got a new gasket on this rocker cover. I'm just going to install it in place and put the nut in the center. And don't forget about the two small nuts at the back. Now one thing I noticed on this bike is that one exhaust has a slightly newer and different shape nut than the other one and there's a, just a tiny groove visible underneath it so the nut on that side has been cut off because probably someone couldn't undo it but I've also noticed that the threads seem dry which is not a good thing because they do tend to seize if they're left dry so I'm just going to remove both exhaust nuts put some copper anti-seize on the threads and then put them back together it's a small job that wasn't requested but I think it's worth doing just to make things easier in the future 
and there you could just about see the groove I was mentioning so someone must have used a Dremel or some cutting tool on this sometime in the past which is what you normally do if they're really seized and you can't get them off but I've just cleaned the threads a bit with a brass wire brush and now I'm applying some copper anti-seize which should keep the threads from seizing for a long time to come give the nut a few taps to tighten it back up and we're done with the side so I'm reinstalling the old spark plugs for now just because they're clean and I'm not going to use a torque wrench I'm just going to snug them down but this bike will get new spark plugs before it leaves the table and now I'm undoing the nut on the other side which fortunately came loose after a few taps as well and you may be able to notice this one is slightly more corroded and the edges aren't as sharp so they didn't come in the same set So clean the threads again, apply a thin coat of copper anti-seize, put the nut back and give it a few taps to tighten it, and that's it, we're done with this video. And that's it, we're done, job's almost good, valve clearance is fine. I didn't go into much detail in the video because I didn't feel the need because it doesn't apply to everyone but this bike has stripped um, studs in the head which I didn't know I only found that out when I tried to torque them to spec they wouldn't they, obviously they would be slipping I spoke with the owner he was aware of that he just failed to mention it and we're gonna leave it as it is for now it's not leaking it was like that before but next time this bike comes in it's probably gonna get some helicoils in the head and try to fix those uh, broken threads but apart from that, the valve clearance is good. We've uh, re-greased the, the nuts on the exhaust, which is great. They, they shouldn't seize now in the future. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. We're going to have uh, probably two more videos on the RATST, and that's it. Thank you.